Hello and welcome again, listeners. I am your presenter, Miss Brihania White, and today I am thrilled to continue our podcast series, Modern Technology for Inclusive Education, a Caribbean Consideration. Firstly, I know in my last episode, I mentioned that the next one will be the last. However, this is not it. Instead, I felt an absolute need to produce this episode before the finale. Unlike past episodes, I will be brief. I want to use this episode to bridge my past episodes, robotics, augmented reality, and virtual reality to my upcoming final episode. You won't want to miss it. I am really excited about that one. Let's get right into it. Some time ago, I presented avatar-based learning at various workshops for educators. We focused on using avatars to facilitate learning in both face-to-face and online environments. You can find that link in the description area for this episode. At those workshops, we defined and provided examples of commonly used avatars. We looked at ways avatars are already used in other applications such as business, gaming, the movie industry, and the social media. We focused on how educators can use avatars in education and the derived benefits. It ended with participants creating a talking avatar to introduce themselves to their students. Hi, it's nice meeting you. My name is Miss Bree, and I am Evoki. What is Evoki? Evoki is a talking avatar. An avatar is a graphical representation of a user or the user's alter ego or character, or digital persona. Vocus allow for a form of self-expression that extends beyond the capabilities of text and emoji alone. If you really want to get students engaged and excited. I feel the need to mention this as it indicates my personal interest and hope for Caribbean education. When persons ask why, I respond why not. When they say that's impossible, I say technology makes the seemingly impossible possible. As an advocate for ICTs in education and digital transformation in Caribbean education, I refuse to be daunted by slow and inconsistent progress in some areas. I choose to focus on what we can achieve, limitless possibilities, and how it can be done. I share these ideas and experiences to attract like-minded persons and those willing or have the means to make a difference. Looking back at my script on avatar-based learning, I may have implied then but now will explicitly affirm that avatar-based learning allows for diversity in the classroom. It enhances cultural expression, facilitates equity in learning, and accommodates inclusive education. At the most conspicuous level, our avatars can take any shape, form, ability, gender, if any, race, if any, ethnicity, if any, religion, if any, socioeconomic status, if any, sexual orientation, if any, language and background. While you may acknowledge my graphical representation of me, the emphasis is usually placed on other aspects such as participation, contributions, and capabilities within the application or platform. These applications or platforms may include online chats or messaging like WhatsApp and Snapchat, online forums or communities like Facebook, now known as Meta or Twitter, virtual reality, simulations, video games like Minecraft, 
Fortnite, movies, artificial intelligence. The objective is not to hide behind your digital image. Instead, it should serve as an open and safe expression of how one perceives themselves. Marketers can liberate individuals sensitive to their personal appearance and physical features. Avatars allow for creative expression. Some avatars, like talking avatars, facilitate engagement as the student manipulates their speech and motion. Research shows that students of all backgrounds and cultures feel empowered and participate more in class when using avatars to promote inclusive and equitable learning experiences. It reflected positive changes in learners' behaviors and attitude. During training sessions, teachers respond to cultural diversity and multiple situations within the classroom environment through student avatars who populate the simulated classroom. Trainee teachers can talk to the student avatars and they respond. In one example, Researchers control the avatars representing learners of diverse ethnicities and personalities typically, typically encountered in a middle school classroom. They all have uniquely different virtual characters that reflect diversity at the school. Their behaviors reflect everything from those in a perfect classroom to students who may be wildly out of control. The avatars bring the realities of standing in front of a group of children. It allows teachers to make mistakes and learn from them without affecting a real child. Teacher candidates worked on behavior management skills and pedagogy to refine their instructional skills without impacting real students. Of course, there are some dangers associated with using avatars. For example, some students may prefer stereotypically attractive avatars rather than those fostering personal self-expression. Persons may hide behind avatars to bully others online. Cyberbullying is not uncommon. A lack of diverse avatars plays a role in marginalizing individuals and groups in some communities. In my personal experience, when using avatar libraries, I struggle to find avatars that reflect Caribbean people and culture in so-called global software. And yes, still more attention should be paid to avatars skin tone palette, age, and weight differences to create more diverse and inclusive avatars. Here ends this week's episode on Avatars for Inclusive Education. Again, I renew the call for Caribbean EdTech researchers and like-minded educators to consider avatar-based learning for inclusive education.